spending a few weeks. A couple of weeks ago, we, we uh, kicked off a four-week series of messages. I, I was just sitting and, and praying about as right before school started. We had a little time off, and, and uh, we just went and sat down for a while. And, and, and that's always refreshing uh, whenever you get a chance to do that. And so we had just a little time there at the end of July, so we were able to slow down. And uh, our teacher's conference that normally happens at the end of the July happened at the beginning of July, and so we had a little time that opened up. And so we took that, and, and as I was thinking about school starting and going back and all of those things, God just impressed some words on my heart uh, about this season. Uh, and, and for some folks, it's not, you know, you, you, you get to a different stage of life. Uh, we took Michaela uh, to Lexington yesterday, and when, uh, when we got back in the driveway last night, I said, so are we actually, does this mean we're empty nest now, or is this, does she come back? Or does, how does this work? And so I don't know. So we're still trying to sort that out. But uh, you get to different things. But I've been teaching for so many years that I, I don't think any other way. And so this is that season of return. Uh, this is that season that we go back to a schedule, that we go back to these things. And so this first week of August, or this first, this first month of school in August, is when we have all these things that's going on. And so it's like, oh, man, I've really gotten out of the habit of this. I've gotten out of the habit of that. I, I, I stopped eating good, or I stopped sleeping good, and I spent too much time, you know, um, binge-watching all these shows on Netflix, and now I can't, you know, stop, and now i got to go, and i got to study, and there's all these classes and all this stuff, and... And so this is a good time to just step back and say, how do I make things better? Uh, how can I get back in a good routine? How can I get back in a, in a good place? And you don't have to be in school or even have kids in school for that to happen, but uh, I know for a lot of us this is a time that we start thinking about that. And, and so we started with reflect and repent. Last week we focused on return. Today we're going to focus on renewal. And I love what the psalmist says in the 51st Psalm uh, in, in verse 10. It says, create in me... A clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. And so when we think about things that we encounter in life, uh, things that we, that we need to renew in our lives, uh, one thing that, that um, and I thought I was thinking of different examples of things and something that maybe would, would kind of resonate with everyone. And so some of you may not have this experience, but uh, I'm a guy who drives old vehicles, so I, so I know this, all right? And so what happens over time on a vehicle's headlights, right? My wife's vehicle has really nice headlights, and you can see really far and really good. Mine, on the other hand, sometimes it's like, are they on? Uh, it's like, I really don't know. Or bright, it doesn't really matter. I can bright light you, and you're not going to flash at me because, well, they just don't work that good, okay? And, and here's what the problem is, is, is the lenses. It's, it, everything, I mean, they're, just, they're old, and they've been through a lot, and so, and they just get dingy, and they get they get crusted over, and they get all that road grime, and then they just start deteriorating, and it just happens, and and, and that's what happens to us sometimes. Life just throws everything at us, and it builds up. Now, that, this is the thing about it. That this is the thing. If you if you only drive that vehicle, then you don't notice it because over time it just gets dimmer, and dimmer, and dimmer, and, and you think, well, that's just the way life is. That's just the way it is. And then you get in a new vehicle and you turn the headlights on. You're like, holy cow, I can see the yellow line. I can see things and I can see signs and this is amazing. And, and, and so that there's a new way to live. What can happen in our lives if we don't ever take a moment and, and explore how to renew our hearts, then we just get used to it. And we just get used to a stale way of living. We can get used to just the mundane and the dingy and, 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 and whatever else comes that way. And so... The everyday wear and tear of life can cause us to get worn down, and then all of a sudden, we can't see very clearly, and we don't realize that it's happened to us. So the question comes, how does God create in us a clean heart? How does He create in us a clean heart? What does He do? And, and, and this is what I think He would say, and I think this is where we begin to focus, and that's where the, the, the bulk of this message will take us, is we're not really talking about the heart, we're talking about our minds. Okay, and so we have to understand the Hebrew poetry of the psalmist, uh, that, that the Hebrew language of the Old Testament was always filled with beautiful poetic language. And so we realize that the psalmist is not referring to the flesh and blood and heart muscle that lies in our chest, but he's, he's talking about the expression of who we are, the expression of, of, of what we have become in our, in our lives. And who we are becomes then an expression of, of what we're thinking. 
And so we're going to talk about our thoughts today. We're going to talk about our thought life a little bit. Look at what Paul says to us um, in his letter to the Romans. Beginning in verse 12 with, with verse 2. He says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. How do you renew your mind? How do you renew your mind? The the, the process, and we're going to look at at some things this morning. The process begins in, in your thinking. Where do your most frequent thoughts lie? What are you thinking about? My uncle reminded me one time. <laughs> uh, he was married to my Aunt Linda, my mom's sister. And, and we were actually talking about this very subject in church one time in a Bible study. And, and, uh, and, and she, Linda liked to talk a lot. And so she was always talking and thinking about a lot of things. And, and, and I made the comment, you know, that you're always thinking about something. And he, he, uh, he, 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 he argued with me. He said, you know, sometimes... I just think about nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I guess there's some of us that can do that, where you just kind of turn it off, man, and just like, I, I have a hard time doing that. My mind is thinking about something all the time. I'm building something, going somewhere, be, being vision, looking at something, that my mind is always going. And, and so you understand that, that, this, that this self-thought is, is, is happening uh, in our minds. And so where do those thoughts lie? What do you think about most of the time? Because where your thoughts lie forms who you are. And so you, you ask us at yourself the question, what are you digesting? Okay, what are you digesting? If somebody is, is, is watching or, or listening or observing negative things all the time, okay, they just they constantly sit in front of a TV screen or, or in front of their phone or something, and everything that they're digesting is, is negative, they're going to be negative, okay? That's just who they're going to be. When they get around somebody and begin to talk to you, everything that they have digested for the last three weeks or days or whatever will start coming out. And so I can talk to you for about 15 minutes, and, and, and I can kind of get an idea of, of where your thoughts lie. Because what's, what's going on in your head? What are you thinking about? What's, what's going on? What are you, what, what's going on there? What are you, what, what's, what's the primary thing that you're ingesting? Because what goes in through these will come out through this. And what goes in here comes out this way. And you know people like this. And they are such a joy to be around, right? Look at this. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. This is, this is powerful. He says, above all else, guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. All right? What goes in will come out. And so you have to be the protector of what goes into it. All right. And parents, if you have children, then you are that, you are that, that guard. Okay. Be be careful with the media. Be careful with news sources. Be careful with social media. Okay. Because what you digest, what goes into you is what will come out of you. It'll it'll affect the way you think. It, It will affect the way you observe the world. It, It will, it will greatly affect the way you think about yourself. Okay, it'll greatly affect the way that you, that you view yourself when you, when you digest a lot of things uh, from, from social media, the news, and all, everything else. Our eyes are the window to our souls. And, and we have to be careful what we set in front of them and for how long. Now, it, it, here's the thing about parenting. Discipline and self-control is both taught and learned. Okay? Discipline and self-control is, about ta- is, is taught and learned. We can try to prevent someone from ever making a poor choice. Okay, We, we can try to do that. We, we can try to build walls. We can try to put in protections and try to keep someone from making a poor choice. Okay, And so I, I don't, I'm not trying to be critical of anybody, and, and so don't, but, but this is my observation as a teacher. Okay, as a teacher of 33 years, having lots of kids, okay, taking lots of kids on trips, taking lots of kids overnight, camps, 
I mean, I've been in the van with them. I've been on the bus with them. I've been everywhere. I've seen good choices. I've seen pretty bad choices. I've seen a lot of things. Okay, and so this used to be a thing, and so this is what I observed, and, and it's just a small thing here. If you ever have a child from a family that has no television in the house, this used to be a thing, now we have phones and all this other stuff, this goes back 20 years. We used to have families just like, there's no TV in this house, okay, none. So the TV's been taken out, and that's okay. If that was your choice, and that's fine, I'm not criticizing that, but this is what I'm telling you, is that from my standpoint, when I take that kid to the Galt House Hotel and say, here's your hotel room and here's your key, all right, when they're supposed to be somewhere, I'm like, knock, 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 knock. Hey, are you ready to go? And they're sitting on the end of the bed like this. And they're just, just overindulging, okay, on something that they've never had said in front of them. Okay, and then it's like they're just taking this all in. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my gosh, you know. And, and I, don't, I may not even know it, okay, because I actually found this out when I was like, why can't, why, what's going on? And they're like, they don't have TV in their house. And so they're just like, they can't get away from it. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so this is what I've learned over time is like, you know, the only way we learn to make good choices is to somehow deal with the consequences of a bad choice. And if we don't get to feel a little bit of the weight of that, then, then it's hard to make that choice the next time. For example, when my kids were at home and, we were, and they were growing up and they were young, Michaela particularly, more so than Taylor, is like, well, we're going to, you know, the friends would all come to the house and we'd have a sheep show the next day. And it's like, we're going to watch this and we're going to do this. And I'm like, hey, we roll at 7 a.m. Okay. We roll at 7. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be up. We're going. Yeah, we're going. We roll at 7 a.m. Okay. We got to get there. All right. And so they stay up late. Okay. So what I do the next morning, I will drag them out by their ankles and, and get them dressed and then set them in the back of the truck. And then they got the hood on and they're like, and, and so, and the, and the purpose of that is this, you made a choice, and this is the consequence, you're not going to die, okay, you're just going to feel bad for the day, okay, and so since you felt bad today, the next time, we think about it, right, that's how we parent, okay, that's how we, sometimes you have to let, the, it's like, you can have one cookie, well, you're just a, you're just a Scrooge, okay, you're stingy, but at some point in my life growing up, somebody said, no, you can have the whole box, okay did you know you can get drunk on chocolate all right okay you really don't get drunk on it but you have a hangover all right because that's what that's what they tell me it's like is because it's like okay you're sick all right and you're on your you're throwing up and then so i got sick on chocolate cookies and i was like dying and it's like okay so somebody who said you could only have a couple kind of knew what they were thinking about and so i don't do that no more all right i had to go through that somebody finally just said here knock yourself out See what it's like. You will get sick. Consequences. I didn't die from it, but I learned from it. God allows those things in our life. He allows those things to happen in our life. As parents, we learn our kids. And sometimes it's like, we're going to have to give them a little more rope. Okay? We'll give them a little more rope, and then they'll, you know, whoo, there they are. And they learn from it. It's what goes in is what comes out. What are you watching? What are you reading? What are you consuming with your eyes? More so now than ever, they track us, okay? The media, the, the organizations, I mean, they, they track. They, I like to watch racing. I'm a race fan, okay? And I'm a football fan. And so when you watch races on television late at night, like old men do, and it's like it comes time for the advertisement, and then it's like, do you have joint pain? And I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of hurting here. It's like, Why do they know that? Why are they not advertising something for a young person? No, they know who's watching, and so they try to target you. So you got to be careful what you put in here and how much time you spend watching it because somebody knows that you're watching it, and they're going to try to influence your decision. Sometimes we just have to be allowed to fail. We have to be allowed to fail. We have to, we have to make those decisions, and, and we have to go through that. So many times I see a child that, that comes from a home that all of their choices were made for them, and they were never allowed to fail. It's like, here, you're, here's your, you're, 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 we're not going to let you fail. Then they, they tend to self-destruct uh, for a time. And they'll come back, but man, it can be a rough lesson. 
The problem is, is that when we become adults, the consequences are greater, and then they're more severe. Okay? Then they're more severe. And, and, and today, I mean, college used to be a time of learning. It's like, go knock yourself out, big boy, and if you're going to, you know, do some crazy things and you'll learn. And so, and, and, and in my time, 30 years ago, we could go get a part-time job, make $5 an hour, and pay our way through college. Now it's like, oh, go knock yourself out and lose $50,000 in scholarships. And it's like, oh, it's a heavier weight. So as parents, we, we have a heavier weight to, to carry. It's a bigger deal. The consequences are greater. If I wanted to package this in a way just to kind of put a bow on this for some, for some walking points so that we can understand, I, w- I want to turn to Philippians chapter 4 and look at verse 8 because this is what Paul says here in his letter. And, and, and this, is, this is where we go is where we take this because it's like I, I can be critical and I, I don't mean to be critical with this. God's purpose is not critical. It's like, okay, so we really do need to renew our thought life. We really need to renew this. So how do we do that? How do we, how do we make this happen? He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, Whatever's noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What do you think about? There's a measuring stick, isn't there? All of a sudden, we have a guide, all of a sudden, He gives us references. Where we spend our time in our thought life, we're asking ourselves the question, is that, is it right? Is it true? Is it noble? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it admirable? Is it excellent? Is it praiseworthy? If it's not, why are we spending time there? Why are we dwelling there? You see, you have control of your thought life. Okay? You have control of your thought life. Andy Stanley reminds me all the time, I'll never forget this, that you're the common denominator in every bad decision you ever made. Okay? You were there. (laughs) You drank it, smoked it, whatever it was, but you were the one who did it. You were part of that. And so you're the common denominator in every bad decision you've ever made. And so you have control over what you consume with your eyes. It's your eyes. I challenge you to renew that. Renew that. Examine it. Take the steps to clean away the grime. See, when, 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 you, when you renew your headlights, if they're my headlights, it usually starts with a grinder, <laughs> okay? Uh, you put something on there to kind of start, and then you got to have something that's like a scouring pad, right? And you need to move that scouring pad faster than my little hands can to, to really chip away at it. And some of us need to do that. Some of us need to do that with our, with our eyes because we, we've allowed too much grime to build up. We've got to wash and clean away the nastiness of life so that we can see clearly the plans. And, and this is what I love about that process. You know, it gets, that you, if you've ever waxed a car or if you've ever cleaned, if you've ever done it or re- restored uh, an old something, when, when you put all that stuff on there and then you grind and you grind, and you, my favorite part of that process is that clean water just washes it all away. You see, and that's what God does for us. That's what Jesus did. The, the, the blood that was shed on the cross is what is used to cleanse away the grime and the nastiness in our lives. And, and so when we renew our heart, when we renew our spirit, when we clean our, our, and, and refresh, it, it, it's ultimately that is what cleanses it away. We allow that to wash over us, and we allow that to cut away the grime and the nastiness. You, you have control of what you consume with your eyes. So examine it, and take those steps to clean away the grime and the effects uh, of the everyday roads that we encounter. This is what it said when we looked at it. It says that we're to renew our minds and that the renewing of our minds reveals what God's will is for us. So if we want to experience God's will in our lives, if we want to know what He has for us, we have to renew our hearts, our minds, our eyes, what, our, what, our, what we're thinking about, what we're seeing, what we're consuming reveals to us what he wants us to do you see we can watch something or we can consume some media or whatever and we can become just angry and God's over here going but I have something for you I have something for you that will make an impact 
I have something for you that will change someone's life. I have something for you that will change your life. And if you'll quit consuming all this negativity and listen to me, I'll show you. I'll share it with you. Because the renewing of our minds has the effect of being able to understand what God's perfect will for our life is. You see, most of our negativity is focused on this world. Most of our negativity is focused on what's going on here. God's plan is to take us out of this world. God's plan is for us to focus beyond this world. God's plan is for us to focus on eternity. We can experience eternity right now. You, you, you begin experiencing eternal life the moment that you say yes to the relationship that he offers. It doesn't come when you die, because you don't. You get that? You don't. Once you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're never going to die. You may go through a physical process, but it will be a transitional process of which you will, will appear in glory, and it's instant. So you, you're living eternal life now. Don't, don't look down on everything. That's, look, look up to Him. He has a plan and a purpose in the midst of this. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We have to learn how to live in it. And we also have to learn how to not live like this with everyone else who is. You get that? You and your terrible life. That is no good. It's not helpful. It's not helpful. His plan for us always lies in moving to eternity and bringing as many as we can with us. I want to close this morning with this verse that was given to me uh, the very first time. Uh, that I really read and understand it. Uh, a good friend that's a Christian counselor. And, and, and he gave this verse to me uh, several, several years ago, probably almost uh, uh, 25 years ago. And, and I, I had read it before, but it just kind of gleaned over it. But now when I read it, I really feel the weight of it, and it really kind of, kind of re- ties this all together. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Because this is, this is your verse. Okay, and this is your walking point. This is what you take from this. It says, We demolish arguments, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That verse always humbles me. It always humbles me. Because as we set out to renew our minds... That's the goal. Every thought, every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Are you there? I'm not yet. I'm trying. But I'm not there. We have a lot of thoughts. We have a lot of thoughts. As we strive to make those thoughts obedient to Christ, uh, it'll, it'll challenge you. Don't let it run you crazy. Let it challenge you. Ask yourself the question, how much am I consuming? How much, how much of this is, is time spent in His Word? How much of this is spent in foolishness? You know, there's a place and a time for, for entertainment. There's a place and a time for, for rest. There's a place and a time for, for checking your brain at the door and just laughing or whatever it is. But how much of it do we consume? How much of it, are, and what are we doing with the, with the thoughts? What are we doing with the images that we view? Are we using them in, 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 in comparison? Because if it is, it, it, can be, it can be dangerous. It can be dangerous. Every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Every effort made toward that goal brings about the renewing of the mind. Listen, our thoughts, our self-thoughts can bring damage to our relationships. Listen, you can get angry at somebody. And they're not even be in the house. All right? You can get mad at somebody and they're not even around you. You know this. You've done this. You start thinking about something or you think about an issue or whatever and all of a sudden anger begins to build up. And all of a sudden you're mad. And then what happens if that person all, all of a sudden shows up? If it's your spouse, you'll just go, Bleh. I'll just put that on you. And they're like, what? Because they're not thinking about that on the way home. They're thinking about something else. And all of a sudden, you just vomit all that on them. And they're like, who are you? And what have I done? I've been gone all day. And now you've attacked me. And so what, how, do we, well, how do we respond when we're attacked? I'll tell you how I respond when I'm attacked. I typically attack back. 
Now we're fighting. How did this happen? It's because we didn't make our thoughts obedient to Christ. We listened to a different voice. And there is an enemy. There is an enemy that prowls around on, in, on this earth seeking whom he may devour. And he will try, and, and, and here are his enemies. Here, here's what he tries to destroy. Families, marriages, and lives. And if he can get into your thoughts, if he can find his way in there, wherever he's going to go, however it's going to happen, what you're sitting in front of, what you're binging, he'll get in there. And you've got you've to hold him accountable. You've got to make those thoughts obedient to Christ. And if you're not, it'll run over you. It'll run over you. Every effort that you make matters. You say, oh, man, I'm, I'm in this deep. <laughs> okay. Make the effort. Make the effort. There's, there's good tools in these things. Okay. There's good tools in these things. Every Sunday morning I get up and, and actually it happens on my way here. My watch will buzz and I look at my watch and it says your screen time this week was an average of so many. If it's too much, what is too much? I don't know. It'll tell you next week if it was more or less. If you think it's too much. You can look at, at your apps and see how much time you spend on, on in, any individual one. It'll, it'll track it for you. It's good at it. It doesn't care. But you should. Every thought, every thought to make it obedient to Christ, every effort brings us toward that goal, renews our mind. Are you there? I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying. So I can, I, I, I'm with you. I'm not looking down at you. I'm looking at us together. We, we, we're, as a society, we have really stepped into a place I think that we don't even realize. I think what's happened when it comes to social media and all the smartphones and all the things that we have in our pockets, and I've got them on every, I live on it, okay? So I'm not here saying that you can't, but what I, what, what's happened is, is we're driving down the road and our headlights have gotten dim and we don't realize it. We've just gotten used to it. We've just gotten used to the dim light. And we need to let it shine brighter. We've got to take the steps to clean away the ground. We have to make conscious efforts at being more disciplined with what we do with our thoughts and with our minds. It creeps in. And I'm just thankful that I have a God that lives inside of my heart that will knock on my door every now and then and go, Hey, you need to listen. And you need to share this with everybody else so that maybe they will. I'm not being critical. It's just where we are. Somebody needs to sometimes stand up on the, on the, on the tower and go, Hey, guys, you all are living in a dimly lit world because you're not letting your light shine because you've allowed the world to wash over it. And we need to clean it up. We need to clean it up. Every effort made toward that goal brings about the renewing of the mind. Sometimes I just need a moment to renew my efforts. And maybe you do too. This is a good time. Let me pray for you.